I'm going to have to hold this the whole time. It has to be this way, and this is not, fit. this, my, my phone don't fit. If I do it sideways, then everybody sees it sideways. So I'm going to have to hold it. Really? Yeah. Wow. I know. Because this doesn't fit my camera. It will tip, he said. What is he saying? Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of 
our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days' walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nivea shall be overthrown. And the people of Nivea believed God. They proclaimed the fast, and everyone great and small put on the sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity, and he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Immediately he called them, 
and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Follow me. Our lessons invite us once more to reflect on vocation, our calling and discernment. I may have shared this definition of vocation or calling by one of my teachers Friedrich Bietner, never met him, um, he's a teacher to me through his books. And this is what he says about vocation. Vocation is the place where our deep gladness meets the world's deep need. Vocation is the place where our deep gladness meets the world's deep need. Isn't that beautiful? Our deep gladness arises from the gifts we have been given. What are your gifts that meet the world's deep need? This is a question to discern, isn't it? Last week I mentioned that discernment is a capacity that we all have. It is a process of distinguishing God's agenda or will from our agenda or will. It is a process that requires humility and repentance, humility and accepting the gifts we have been given, not because we deserve it, but because God desires to partner with us in advancing God's kingdom that is already here. It is also a process of repentance for our willfulness and our desire to advance our agenda as an alternative to God's agenda. Discernment is not easy. I mentioned that last week. But if we are to be of service to God, to others, and to ourselves, we must say yes. We must say yes to what God is calling us to do, individually or collectively, or and collectively, as to go together. As I was reading through the Jonah's story, it occurred to me that the process I just described is illustrated in it. We heard a portion of his story, but it will, it will serve us better if we consider the entire story. You remember Jonah as the prophet who was swallowed by a big fish? But to be able to understand the process of discerning God's call, it is good to recollect what happened to Jonah. Jonah is an Israelite who was called by God to go to the great city of Nineveh to tell the people there that God is about to punish them for their wicked ways. Jonah, however, refuses to go and flees to Tarshish because in his words addressed to God, I knew that you are a gracious God, merciful, or I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. So Jonah actually did not want the people of Nineveh to be saved. Perhaps they were not his kind of people, or, as the story seems to indicate, perhaps he was afraid that he would be embarrassed if God did not punish Nineveh. Whatever the case may be, Jonah gets into a boat. He's fleeing from God's call for him to be a prophet and an, and an instrument for saving the people of Nineveh. In the course of his journey at sea, the boat is overcome by a storm, and when the crew discovers that he is fleeing from God, they throw him overboard. 
There he is swallowed by the big fish that God has sent. While inside the fish, Jonah prays to God. Jonah repents. And in three days, in the fish, he gets spit out to safety on the shores of Nineveh, of all places, right? The place Jonah didn't want to go. It's interesting to me that he stays in the belly of the fish for three days before the fish spits him out. What does that remind you? Reminds me of resurrection. But I digress. So Jonah is now in Nineveh, and there he prophesies, and the Ninevites repent and change their ways. And for that reason, God spares them from the punishment. This was, of course, precisely what Jonah had feared. So he becomes angry with God. The story concludes with God scolding Jonah, but it is not clear that Jonah changes his outlook. This is a powerful story because it reminds us that we are called by God and that we often substitute our agenda for God's agenda. In the gospel we heard this morning, Jesus says, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Follow me. According to Bible scholars and theologians, the kingdom of God is right here, right now. So we might say that the kingdom of God is right in the midst of our daily routine. That's the good news that Jesus wants us to believe, believe in, to accept, and to live into. The invitation, Jesus' invitation to follow him, is interesting, I think. I think following him, but follow him where and how? Jesus shows the way, of course. In, in John's Gospel, Jesus says he is the way, right? But what is Jesus' way? We know about his healing healing and raising the dead and, and uh, feeding the poor. What else do we know about Jesus? What other ways does Jesus show us? Jesus walked to his death, but because of his love for God and his love for God's creation, Jesus follows that, surrenders, goes to die, but rises again. I think that's for me, that's, that's what surrendering is, surrendering or letting go of what gets in the way of us following God's will. So what we let go is what we let die, right? So that we can rise to a new way of doing things that is in alignment with God's will, with God's agenda. So we are not talking necessarily about big accomplishments here. We are called into ordinary places to meet ordinary needs. Where in our ordinary lives are places where our deep gladness meets the world's need? Everything is connected, so whatever we do to that part of the world, Wherever we are, we do to the whole world. It affects the whole world. When one part of the body is healed, or the saying is this, when one part of the body is hurt, the whole body hurts. When, one, when, when that part of the body is healed, the whole body is healed. So I encourage us this week to be asking ourselves, what is the world's deep need? And what are my gifts that will meet them, will meet with them? So if you have a gift for healing, where in the part of the world, where in your part of the world needs to be healed? Where do I begin to heal so that I can be an instrument for healing? 
We all need to be healed. But where do we need to be healed so that we can be instruments of healing? If you have a gift for listening, what needs to be heard? And what am I willing to listen to? If you have a gift for teaching, what needs to be taught? And what do you teach? At the same time you ask yourselves these questions, also discern what you are willing to give up and repent. That paves the way of you moving forward. Are you following me? I hope you're following me. You see, I think the alternate end of this process is transformation. Our transformation. To be changed into who God wants us to be in the first place and be God's instruments for the welfare of all. That is that is what happens when we follow Jesus, when we follow Jesus the Christ. So, may the Spirit guide us in discerning our call and give us courage to follow it. Amen. Let us now take our two minute quiet period and in your bulletins are the questions. You can focus on the first two questions and take the third question and uh, reflect on it during the week. We now continue with the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, a washed man. man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who receives from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Merciful God, you have promised to hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church and for the world. Enliven the church for its mission, that we may be the salt of the earth and light of the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Daniel, all clergy and lay leaders, and all congregations in our diocese. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray, Buck Steenery, the Absalom Jones Fund, the Church of All Saints, Diocese of Guatemala. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace, that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. We pray a smooth transition to the new administration we pray for Joseph, our president, the United States Congress, Tom, our governor, and the Lower Makefield Township leaders. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Awaken us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for the containment of the coronavirus and for all affected by it. We pray for all affected by natural disasters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others, that all may act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all those whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray for those who protect us from danger and those who labor to keep us healthy. For first responders, truck drivers, and seafarers who transport our essential needs. For grocery workers, those who serve in the military. For firefighters, police officers, nurses, doctors, for everyday heroes whose courage inspire us especially Devin, Corey, Nathan, Chris, Josh, Matthew, Keith, Jack, Joe, Eric, Jason, Ryan, George, Jared, and Andrew. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. For those struggling with addictions and mental illness, for prisoners, for the homeless, and for those without work, may they know the power of your healing love. We pray especially for Jim, Andrew, Kenneth, Terry, Justin, Kathy, Norman, William, Joanne, Bev, Norma, Teresa, Alyssa, Peter, David, Dara, Rena, Karen, Pam, Edna, and those you name in your hearts. Make us willing agents of your compassion, strengthening us as we share in making people whole. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in the faith of Christ, especially those whose faith is known to you alone. Give comfort to those who mourn. Bring them peace in their time of loss. We pray for you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. May their example inspire and encourage us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Your word is a lamp for our feet in darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy. Help us, gracious God, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Join me now in saying the prayer attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, as his instruments of your peace, where there is hatred, let us so love, where there is injury, pardon, where there is discord, union, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And so also with you. Peace be with you.
Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, source of the creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and call us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepare the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we, who share these gifts, may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, us let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gift of God to the people of God. Together, let us say the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. As I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. May I never be separated from you. 
May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. In the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, be with you now and always. Amen. Let me, I have a few announcements um, to make. Um, in the back of your bulletins, it tells you about our annual parish meeting, July, I mean July, February 7th, following the uh, service, 10 o'clock service, it will be on Zoom. John uh, sent an email, um, the instructions to install the app, the Zoom app, in your devices um, so that you can participate. We would like as many of you who um, to participate because this is this will be my last annual meeting. It is also an important uh, function in our life together as church. So your participation will be very very important. Morning prayer is resuming next Wednesday or this coming Wednesday, the twenty seventh at nine a.m. Mm -hmm. um, I will be sending you the, I think it says here, the Zoom actually is the same as Zoom, the, the, the link we use for Sunday. Um, if not, I will confirm that um, anyway um, for Wednesday. I will be on retreat from Thursday to Sunday. So the, the Sunday service on the 31st will be morning prayer that will be led by John Nicolau. Um, and that's it. I hope you all have a good week. Thanks be to God.